Every single bit of this river is beautiful. Every single square inch of it. Especially with the dam going out, it's a river that will run essentially wild from its beginnings up in the mountain down to the Columbia. It's pretty unique in that sense. Condit Dam is now breached. Its reservoir drained, but more tasks remain before the white salmon flows unhindered. Buried beneath these waters for nearly a century is another dam, now exposed. There's no book on this. You try and design and build management plans to, to deal with where you want to go, what you're trying to achieve, and then you get out on the ground and things change. Project managers face a challenge anticipated years earlier, though only now can they solve it. We've got a timber crib structure that was built with 14 by 14 timbers stacked like Lincoln logs to uh, divert the water out of the construction zone. The rock-filled mini dam created a dry work area for building Condit. It too must be taken out so returning fish will have clear passage. The issue with the coffer dam is we knew we had to remove it, but we really didn't know the extent of access issues that we would have trying to get down in here. We didn't know that until the reservoir was gone. While they labor to disassemble this structure, demolition of Condit must continue, but the dam will not give up its place easily. Crews strain to shatter resistant concrete. This is not your uh, mother's dump truck here. It's a pretty serious, heavy duty piece of construction equipment. Condit is not actually leaving the valley. Instead, it has a new mission to fill and recontour space once occupied by the flow line. About 10,000 truckloads and five months of hammering are ahead to dislodge the dam and reach the river 125 feet below. I'm always impressed at how much has happened when I stand on top of the dam and look at it. When I get down here, to take another perspective, it's like, wow, we got a ways to go. Up the valley from Condit, contractors must manage another complex part of the project, restoring a two-mile stretch of canyon, the former reservoir. Mature plants that once grew along its shoreline, like this willow, are moved to the banks of the white salmon with a gardener's attention to detail. Just give it a good head start, a little pat on the ground, and on to the next one, and that's proven uh, extremely effective. Planted with love. Flags mark locations where some 14,000 trees will make a forest in the reservoir's old footprint. Dozens of acres go green as landscapers apply nearly one and a half tons of grass and shrub seed to new slopes. Downstream, crews roll out extended shifts to make the final push. The demo team provides an assist. The dam is gone. We have gotten in, we've removed everything. The river is free flowing through the former project site. My great grandfather fished this water. Uh, someday his great grandchildren and future generations will have that same opportunity. Already the white salmon is roused by steelhead at BZ Falls, back for the first time in a century. They're such athletes, they still have. They're just so strong. And to stand there and watch them make these jumps. Right here, up on the left. Yes, there's another one right behind it. Fish experts have also arrived to scout the newly unharnessed waters and to document changes. You would not know that there was a dam here unless you saw the, the grass and the way the moss is growing. 
the dam site, as you're coming towards it in a raft, it, it's hard to know where it was. There's salmon up and through the system. Uh, we just went by several reds or salmon nests that were in the river. Fish are actively passing upstream. As biologists peer into the river's future, the powerhouse sits quietly, a landmark to history. This has been a long process with many stakeholders, lots of emotions and, and lots of views. Ultimately, removing Conda Dam was in the best interest of our customers, and I'm pleased that we were able to do so in a safe and efficient manner.